5G, are we there yet? Will we ever get there? Part 1. Let's ask the basic question. What is 5G? Well, it's obvious, you may say. It's the fifth generation of mobile network. Everybody knows that the G stands for generation. Some may say it's the latest mobile technology, which is going to make Internet of Things or IoT ubiquitous, including self-driving cars, smart robots, and improved artificial intelligence systems, and make human beings redundant. I hope the last one doesn't come true. Then there'll be nobody to buy the 5G phones. Well, if you don't understand the technical jargons you may say, it's the new thing in cell phone technology, and everybody is talking about it, because the mobile speed is going to reach unbelievable levels with 5G. In this video, we'll tell you all about 5G, what's different in 5G compared to earlier networks, the technology that 5G network is comprised of, the cost involved in making 5G to become a reality, and why it's even possible that true 5G may never come into existence around the globe. Some of you know that 5G standards have been firmly established, since 2016, 5G cell phones have been in existence, since 2018, and 5G services are supposedly available in many cities of the world since 2019. If 5G is already there for a while, why does it look like nothing has changed, for most people? That's what we are going to explain. Are we there yet, when it comes to 5G network? Well, it's not a clear yes or no answer. But, if you are a lawyer in a courtroom, and press me hard with a direct answer, the answer will be a no. Now, I know you are interested in knowing why I said no. That's what we are going to explain here. Let's understand the evolution of the mobile network. I'm going to make it very brief, because we are interested in knowing about 5G, and not about the history of mobile networks. But, it still helps to understand 5G better. Though there are many technological changes that happened when one generation of mobile network moved to the next, the most important ones are the frequency and the speed of data transfer. So, watch out for that. 1G The first generation of mobile network used analog data, mixed with radio frequency waves, using frequency modulation, and the frequency it used was 800 MHz. If you didn't get any of what I said, don't worry, because from 2G, it became a true digital modulation, and not an analog signal anymore. 2G The speed of 2G increased the data transfer speed, about 4 times compared to 1G, and went up to 9.6 kilobits per second, and used a frequency of 800 MHz to 1800 MHz. 2G was later upgraded with a new protocol namely GPRS, and this increased the data transfer 20 times, up to 200 kilobits per second. GPRS utilized a radical new technology in mobile network, where data was split into smaller packets, and sent through different frequencies to the target, and later combined when it reached the destination, a technique called packet switching. 3G the third generation 3G mobile network increased the speed between 6 megabits per second to 12 megabits per second, and the frequency it operated was around 2100 megahertz. Later on, improvements were made to 3G, with the introduction of HSPA or High Speed Packet Access Technology, which increased the speed of 3G to anywhere between 8 megabits per second to 30 megabits per second. 4G the fourth generation 4G mobile network is a major improvement on 3G slash HSBA, and it used a different frequency range than its predecessor, namely 3G, thereby increasing the speed of mobile data transfer up to 50 megabits per second. There were several key technologies that have made 4G possible, mainly, MIMO, or multiple input multiple output, and OFDM, or orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. We'll not go into how these technologies worked, since our focus is on 5G. 4G started using frequencies between 600 MHz to 2.5 GHz, 
Though the most popular LTE of 4G network used somewhere around 700 MHz. The lower frequency in the range helped with higher coverage, while the higher frequencies allowed higher amount of data to be transferred. By now, you may have become aware, that every generation started moving into higher and higher frequencies. Frequency is the number of wave cycles per second, and higher the number of waves in a second, the higher the data packets that can be sent, thereby increase the speed of data transfer. If this is true, then why doesn't the mobile technology go to the highest wave now, instead of keep moving to the next set of higher frequency in every generation, giving only incremental improvement? That's a logical question, but, the answer is not so simple. When we look at the challenges of the waves used for 5G, and beyond, we'll get our answer. 5G. Now, we'll dive into the much hyped about 5G. First, let's look at what are the advantages of 5G technology. There are four major advantages of 5G, which makes it incredibly attractive. First is higher bandwidth, as you can expect, the higher the frequency, higher the bandwidth. So, 5G provides a higher bandwidth compared to 4G. Second is lower latency. Latency is the lag, or delay between two data packets or messages, in a computer network. In 5G, the latency will be reduced very much, because of the higher speed of transfer. Third is higher capacity. Since the frequency range is higher, the capacity of data that can be transferred in 5G, will be significantly higher compared to 4G. Finally, we have faster wireless data transfer, as you can expect, if the capacity of data transfer is higher, and the bandwidth is higher, then the speed of transfer will be enhanced. There are three different speeds, and frequencies, in 5G spectrum. Let's take a look at the table here. Type of 5G, data download speed, frequency range. Low band 5G, sub 6 5G, 50 to 180 megabits per second, 700 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. Medium band 5G, also sub 6 5G, 200 to 900 megabits per second, 3.5 to 6 gigahertz. Millimeter wave, high band 5G, 500 megabits per second to 10 gigabits per second, 20 gigahertz up to 86 gigahertz. In some classifications, both low band and medium band are combined together, and called as sub 6 5G, because both of these bands fall under 6 GHz of frequency. We have already seen 5G uses a range, that reaches very high frequency for a mobile network, yet. The frequency starts in the sub 6 range, 600 MHz to 6 GHz to the highest range of millimeter waves, reaching 80 to 100 GHz. Remember the sub-6 frequencies were already used by 4G. So, true 5G is actually the high band 5G, which exceed a frequency of 6 GHz. 5G also enhances on the multiple input multiple output, MIMO feature, of the 4G technology. MIMO is a feature, where the base stations can receive multiple inputs, and transmit multiple outputs simultaneously. This is achieved by a group of antennas, which are broadcasting and listening to the same frequency band, without interference. In 5G, to reduce or eliminate interference, they've added a feature called beam forming, which is a way of focusing the waves, to a specific direction, as a beam, where the receiver is present, instead of scattering the transmission, in all directions. I know 5G has been blamed for everything, from COVID-19, to toothache. But, these people have to look for alternative explanation, because the frequencies that are used in 5G, have been in use for a long time, in everyday use. Let's understand what frequencies the 5G operates, and why it's unlikely to have any harmful effects to human beings. We know high band 5G is the only range of 5G, which uses the higher level of frequency, and can range from say 10 GHz to 100 GHz, though, the frequency currently in use is less than 40 GHz. 
The mid and low band 5G uses sub 6 or less than 6 GHz frequency, which has been largely used by 4G. So, are waves in the 28, 39 or 100 GHz harmful to us, or other living beings? Well, if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, you'll find there is a wide range of frequencies, from gamma rays and X-rays on one end, which have frequencies, which are many billion times higher than 5G waves, and on the other end, where you find radio waves, which are less than one thousandth of the frequency of 5G waves. The millimeter waves used by 5G, are also emitted by several devices, which include the current smartphones, wireless headsets, Wi-Fi devices and microwave ovens. In the electromagnetic spectrum, there are two types of waves, ones that cause ionizing radiation, and the others that are non-ionizing. Gamma rays and X-rays come under the ionizing portion of the spectrum, and are harmful to humans, but the non-ionizing aren't. Ionizing radiation can cause the chemical bonds in your body to ionize, and can cause harm to human cells, including cancer. 5G is similar to any other cell phone radiation, and is under the non-ionizing portion of the spectrum. The frequency of 5G is far less than visible light. So, all visible lights, including electric lamps, emit higher frequency, than the 5G transmitters. Also, remember that the 5G waves are non-penetrable, and can't withstand even minor obstacles. So, there is no way they can harm our tissues. China is the first country in the world, to install 5G system, on a large scale. China has the highest installation of 5G base stations. Totally, the number of installations in China exceed 1.3 million 5G base stations. Shanghai has the highest 5G installations compared to any other city in the world. In Shanghai, the best 5G connections yield around 500 megabits per second, or above in select locations, and above 250 megabits per second in most locations. A specific suburban district of Shanghai, Minhang, has the highest base stations per square kilometer, anywhere in the world, and so it has the highest speeds. As you have seen, even this is not the millimeter wave, high band 5G, but only the middle band 5G, or sub 6 5G. In US, there are roughly 130,000 5G base stations all across the country, including all the major metropolitan cities. However, not all of them are high band 5G. There are different types of 5G, namely low, medium and high band base stations. In other words, if you connect to the low band 5G base station, then you'll not get the higher speed, even though you are connecting to a 5G base station. Only a very few of them are high band 5G base stations, and they reach 1.5 gigabits per second, but many 5G phones don't show a noticeable difference to 4G in US. This is rapidly changing since early 2022. The three major telecom operators of South Korea, namely, SK Telecom, LG U+, and KT Corp have installed 5G base stations in most cities, and are interested in covering about 80% of the country, by 2027. South Korea also has the largest high band 5G, for the size of the country. Japan is another country which focuses on high band 5G all around the country, through its top mobile operator, NTT Docomo. Japan laid the groundwork for 5G, much earlier than most countries, but later fell behind China and USA. There are many Western European nations, like UK, France, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland, etc., along with other Asian nations including Turkey, India, Singapore, etc., are also laying massive groundwork, to move to 5G, at the earliest possible. In part 2, we'll look at the challenges of implementing 5G network, and why 5G may be more a hype, at this point in time, than a reality. Thanks for watching.